Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments with the continuation of the solution series to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. And like I've said in previous videos, if you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula game. This is challenge 681. So let's look at the data set and the problem statements. In terms of the data set, we basically have you know just four rows of data where each one has one character separated by a comma space from the others, okay? Now, in terms of the problem statements, it says split and align the data as shown. So what you see here is that basically you do a split vertically, right? This is gonna give you X, Y, Z, but you can see that as you go from row to row, it basically slides by, you know, one column. So it means here you have X on the next row, it slides by one column, it slides by one column here, okay? The same thing here, M slides, 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 and you just want to stack all of them up together. So it's clear what we are, you know, requested to do. I guess the next question is how do we do it, okay? So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Now there are many ways to skin a cat, like I would always say, but in this one, I'm going to use, you know, something interesting. Now, if you look at this solution here, you see that you can draw a box around this, right? Basically a matrix, okay? So this is like a three by three matrix here. You see like a two by two matrix. And then here you see like a five by five matrix. If you know anything about matrices, you know that there's a special type of matrix where you have only values on the principal diagonal. Okay, and that's a unit matrix. Okay, so in a unit matrix, you only have values here on the in the, uh, on the principal diagonal. Every other value, you know, is zero. Okay, so something tells me that I may be able to use that to come up with something interesting. Okay, so let me show you just the unit matrix first, and then I'll kind of build it up. So to get the unit matrix, you basically use the M unit function, which is kind of saying unit and matrix. Okay, and you tell it the size. So if you say three, it's basically a three by three. Okay, if you tell it five, it's a five by five. And you can see that you have values, non-zero values, you know, on the principal diagonal and then zeros, you know, in every other cell. Okay, so this is where I'm going to start from, right? And then see if I can build something out of that. So the first thing is I know that I need to split this text based on the delimiter. So I'm going to start from there. So I'm going to do a text split. Right, I'm going to split it to rows, right, because it needs to go vertically. So I do comma space, okay, so, and that's the first thing. Now, the next question is for me to create a unit matrix out of this, I need to know how many rows are in here. Somebody could use, you know, maybe the count a function, okay, that's one way. Someone else will say, Oh, well, since I'm looking for the number of rows, can't I just use the rows function? Saying, How many rows do I have here? Okay, so you have three. Once you know that, you can then use the unit matrix and say, okay, unit matrix, give me the value in that cell. Sorry, it's maxed, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and then it gives you this, right? So that's that. If I wasn't pointing at this cell now and I was pointing at this, what will happen? It becomes a five by five matrix, okay? And you see, you know, that go, uh, you know, from left to right, okay? So now, this, that. So the next thing is we need to perform an operation you know, on X, Y, Z, that would ensure that, okay, when you perform that operation, X, of course, will show up because you need it, and these two zeros will become blanks. In the middle here, you want a situation where the first and the last value will be blank, the middle will be uh, Y, on the last row, you want a situation where first and second will be blank, and, you know, the last will be, um, you know, Z, basically. So you can use the left function, right? You can say left of this X, Y, Z, and feed it with this array. This is really interesting. Now the result is going to be a three by three. It's going to be the same dimension as this, but think about it. What, you know, would be the resulting values in that three by three. The first thing is top left will be left of X comma one, meaning pick one character from X. It's going to be X, obviously, right? Then the next one is going to say pick zero characters from X. There's nothing like that technically. So it's just going to show you a blank, like nothing. I didn't pick anything because you didn't say pick one. It's a pick zero. So I picked nothing and that's blank. This is blank. And that's kind of how it goes. Let me show you that. Okay. So you see it. So that's the solution right there. Hmm? So now if I change this to this, you can see what happens based on the identity matrix or unit matrix and then everything expands. So with this expression that we have, 
you know, which is just building off what I've just done here. Split, you know, the text first, create the unit matrix, and then use the left function. We can then, you know, build a bigger formula out of that. Now, what our formula basically needs to do is to perform an operation, that same operation on each of these cells, and then stack them up all together. That's what it needs to do. Okay, so it does that for X, Y, Z. It stores the results in memory. It does it for A, B. Then it's you know, stacks the result from AB with XYZ. It does it for this. It stacks the result with the others. It does it for this. It stacks the result with the others. The resulting stack can be gotten from the reduce function. I get this question a lot. Oh, Victor, can scan work here while using, you know, reduce and not scan? Scan gives you the intermediate stacks. So what I mean is, let's assume this was the very first, which technically isn't the case, but yes. In step one, let's assume I stack this and this together. Okay, that will be step one. In step two, it's going to then extend to this. In step three, it's going to extend, you know, this way. At the end of the day, I'm not interested in step one, step two, because that's what the scan gives me. Scan gives me everything in between. The reduce gives me the final thing, which is really what I want, because at the final step, all of them would have been stacked. So that's why I use reduce and not scan. Scan technically is giving me what's in between. Like if you're doing a running total, it's giving you the values in between. But reduce will give you that final value, which is like the aggregation of everything. Okay? So that's a simple explanation. Can be more detailed, but that's good enough for now. <laughs> okay? So we start with reduce. In terms of the initial value, I'll say, okay, just, you know, empty string, nothing. Now, in terms of the array, these are the cells I want it to loop through, okay? And then take each cell one after the other, perform the operation, you know, of all that thing I showed you just now, and store it in memory, and then we keep stacking them on top of themselves. Okay, so now we need two variables. Accumulator and iterator, okay? So the accumulator is where, you know, the result of every step is stacked. So it's like that magical bucket that, you know, groups everything you have seen so far and aggregates it together. The iterator B here, in my own case, is going to be iterating, which is like going from cell to cell within this array, okay? So it means the first value of B, B is going to come here, it's going to use X, Y, Z. It will then perform whatever calculation you give it, right? It gets the result, it stores it in A. So A now has that result, A keeps it. Then B in the next step is no more going to do X, Y, Z. It's going to do A, B now. It will perform the operation there. The result it gets, it stacks it with what it has saved before, which is the result from X, Y, Z. So those two are now stacked. That's what is now in your A, right? In the next step, when B is going, B is not going to do X, Y, Z or A, B now. It's going to do M, N, O, P, Q. It performs all that operation. It gets the result. It stacks it with what it has gotten so far, which is A, B, and X, Y, Z. And it stores that inside of A. And that's how you keep going. So that's basically how it works. So so A is storing, you know, the aggregated value at the end of each iteration. B is looping through. B is the one iterating and then getting the result and throwing it into A is basically what's happening. Okay? So what we need at the end of the day is we want to stack a V stack, whatever we have stored in A. A is the accumulator. So A is keeping everything it aggregates. So it will then stack it with what? So this is the interesting part. The interesting part is what happens, you know, to each of these values. When you get X, Y, Z, what do you do with? it we are basically going to repeat the steps i did the first time when i was showing you my thought process okay so i'm going to first of all introduce a variable you know using the let because i know i'm going to use that variable a couple of times i can call that variable x what i want x to be is don't forget the first step the first step is obviously to do a text split right that's the first step in whatever it is we are doing okay so we are going to do a text split and we are going to text split what? We are going to text split in this case like X, Y, Z, which is what B is, okay? At every point in time, B is one of these values. So I can just say B, okay? And what would I do? I will split it to rows using a comma space, okay? So that's the first step. Now, after splitting it, what was the next thing I did? I needed to know how many rows do I have after splitting. I can call that variable N, and I can say N is the number of rows after I split. This is the split. The result is in X. Okay, why do I need this N? It's so that I know the dimensions of my unit matrix. That's what I'm, you know, getting at, right? So X will split this, for example, into X, Y, Z vertically. N will now count the number of rows, meaning I can now do like my M units and say N. This is going to give me an uh, identity matrix or unit matrix, right? That has the size of N, which is the number of rows in, you know, this array here okay and don't forget what i did then i then did left 
of the x, y, z that I split out, which in this case is stored in the variable x, okay, and then I fed it to the unit matrix. That's basically what it is. So I'm just repeating those steps I showed you in a formula context. Okay, so now I'm going to close. So now this closes the let, this closes the v stack, this closes the lambda, and this closes the reduce. Let's see what we have. Okay, so now we have the answer is kind of there. You can see the X, Y, Z. <laughs> you know, the answers are there. We just need to get rid of these other things that don't look so nice. What's really happening here is that you are adding uh, or stacking arrays of different dimensions. And that's why it's having the hash NA. Think about it. This is a 3 by 3, right? Now, you want to stack it with a 2 by 2. What happens here to this blank? Okay, it's an, it doesn't know what to fill in there, so it's going to put hash any, like, I don't know what to put in there. Now, let's say you started this, okay, and then you come and you stack it with a 5 by 5 Now, you have these guys here, right? You now have this, and it's like, what do I put in here? So, that's where the n's are coming from, because you are stacking arrays of different dimensions. So, what we need to do is just to put an if n a, and say if it's n a, you know, just make it blank, okay? So, I can come outside of the v stack and say if n a, right so i just need to locate you know that in here okay so that's it there and i put you know if it's na just give me blank then let's close one more bracket now good so now we are very close to it the only thing we need to do is that because of our initial value here that's what introduces this redundant row so i just need to drop this row which is like delete the first row so i'm going to use a drop function and say drop you know from this whole thing you have drop the first row how many rows one from the top okay and then close right so by doing that i have exactly what i want we can test it and just test and see if it's exactly what we have on the left i mean this is just to prove nothing okay so and you have truths all the way so basically you know you've been able to resolve that problem the heart of this is the m unit at least in this way i've approached it okay so m unit is the unit matrix which gives you non-zero values on the diagonal zero values elsewhere and we're able to tweak that you know in some interesting way to get you know this expression so that's what i intended to share in this video i really hope you know you love it and you know you're learning from um, this solution series if you like this video please hit the like button you can also subscribe to the channel you should subscribe to the channel excel moments we need more subscribers okay so for now i'm out